Hey friend, if you're just getting started with watercolor and you don't really know what to paint, in this video, I'm gonna show you three simple painting ideas for beginners. So if you're ready, let's get the brushes out and dive in. So I'm gonna go over an abstract, a floral, and a landscape, um, starting with the abstract. So one of my favorite uh, like abstracts to do is a really blurry stripe. Something that's really important for beginners to get used to is painting wet and wet. So I'm just gonna grab my biggest brush, my size 16 brush. If you have a flat brush, this would actually work better for this because we're gonna do stripes and flat brushes are flat and not round, but rounds will work too. Um, but painting wet and wet is gonna give you a really cool blurry effect but for these stripes, you don't want to overdo it because we want to show some space between each color or each stripe. So it's not just one color or gradient of colors. So I'm covering my entire sheet of paper or the section that I'm painting on for this and making sure that it's glistening in the light that tells me that it's wet and not dry. So that's going to give me a really cool blurry stripe. So I'm gonna do like a shibori look to it. So I've got Prussian blue. And the more water you have on the stripe mixture that you're using, the more water you have, the more it's gonna blend. So if you want it to just blend a little bit and just be a little blurry, then do more pigment to water ratio. But if you want it to be very expansive and blurry, then use a lot more water. I'm gonna go for a thicker consistency so it doesn't blur too much. And you can do thin and watch it blend. Maybe even throw some dots in there. And we'll do a thicker stripe that's lighter. So this will have more water and it will blend more. So I'm gonna start a little bit further away. And then we'll do a thicker consistency again. And you have to work kind of quickly with this. So this is a good exercise to practice as a beginner in working quickly and understanding how wet and wet works. Adding contrast, this is a monochromatic stripe, so it's just blues, but we're gonna add contrast with lights and darks, and we're just making a fun little pattern. So obviously this is super basic and simple, but it's a really great exercise in understanding wet and wet painting, and also just looks really, really cool. Like I would love this on a pillowcase. I can even go back on some of these if they're still wet and add little darker dots, Prussian blue dots. And again, the thicker the consistency, the less it's gonna spread. So if you still want some of those lighter blue dots to show underneath the darker blue, then make sure your consistency is really pasty and thick. You could also throw in some other colors in there if you want to see how the colors interact with each other. Starting with just one color is going to help you simplify and not get too overwhelmed because you do want to paint really quickly with wet and wet. So this is a good exercise to start with just one color. But the next time you do it, try two colors or three colors so that you can continue working on speed and just kind of getting into that flow state. So there's the first simple painting idea. And the next one is just going to be a simple daisy cluster. So I have a lot of tutorials on my channel that cover flowers and um, you can watch them all. I highly suggest you do. But one thing that beginners really struggle with, with when it comes to flowers is understanding shape. So this is gonna take away the com complexity of incorporating different types of strokes. So we're just gonna use one stroke, one type of stroke. We're just gonna use the belly of the brush and kind of plop it down. Um, but what we're gonna focus on developing our eye is with understanding the shape of the flower. So we're gonna be painting a daisy, which is kind of like a disc shape. So we have a disc with a ball in the center 
where the stamen is or the bulb is, and then the stem will come from that ball. So I'm gonna pretend I can see that bulb of the flower, and I'm just going to point my brush around that bulb and plop it on my paper. You can use any color you want for the flower. I'm gonna use cobalt blue because it's different. And I'm just going to point my brush towards where the bulb would be and plop it down, creating this kind of fluffy skirt. Like so. And we're gonna show a flower that's on its side like this and maybe show a flower that's wide open and we're facing it straight on. Maybe for this next flower, I'll do some opera rose and we'll do a more open flower, which is gonna be a circular shape. So now the disc is wide open and I'm just avoiding a circle in the middle. So all I'm doing is pointing my brush towards that center of the flower and plopping it down. Your petals don't need to be perfect. Just try and create a circle shape. So if it's starting to feel lopsided, make the opposite side of where it's feeling lopsided. Like for example, this is a good stretch of balance. This is feeling a little off balance. So I'm gonna come back over here and make this one a little bit longer. Maybe an orange one next. You could even, using the same type of hold, a slanted hold, you could even just kind of scrub it around on your paper if you're showing a flower right up against another one. But leaving white space between flowers is really important and even between petals. So I'm still leaving that oval shape in the middle for where I'm gonna put stamen on the bulb of the flower and the petals are that same kind of simple teardrop shape. Maybe we'll do another orange one down here. Kind of just painting a ballerina skirt and then little notches at the top. I kind of like to have the first few strokes connected and then I'll leave some white space between the next couple. And I just lighten this color with just flicking my orange off in my water cup. So we have three oranges, but two are a darker value than the third. Lighter blue. So this one's kind of the hero of the blues. It's the biggest and darkest or more saturated. So the next I'm grabbing sap green and lemon yellow deep. I wanna use a yellow green so that it competes well with the brighter colors that I have in this piece with the, the um, opera rose and the cobalt and the orange. If I were to use just sap green by itself, it'd be a little bit too mid green or kind of dull. So I'm gonna use a brighter green with yellow. I'm just applying little to no pressure on the tip of my brush to paint in some of these stems in these gaps. You can bring down some stems. If you have a hard time knowing where to place your stems or your leaves, just think of connecting it to the absolute center of the bulb of the flower that you're leading to. So this stem, I could pull right into the middle of this pink flower. So kind of envision where these stems would go by coming to the middle of this orange flower all the way behind that. And then you can add another one here, like so. And then your leaves are always gonna be connected to a stem as well. So I'm gonna have a stem. You can even simplify your leaf a little bit more if these are a little too complex and just do boop, boop. If 
But for these leaves, all I'm doing is pointing my brush in line with the direction my leaf is going to point, apply pressure, and gradually release pressure so you get absolutely thin again, super duper thin. And then meeting at the same tip on the other side. I have a ton of leaf tutorials on this channel, so make sure to check them out. I'll link them in this video if you really struggle with leaves and you wanna get better at them. Highly suggest. I'm just kind of placing leaves where it feels like it's fluffy and flowing and kind of framing each flower, but not overdoing it too much. And then we're going to add the centers. You can do yellow centers with lemon yellow deep and yellow ochre, or you can do a more contemporary spin on your flowers. Since we have this, this cobalt and this neon pink, you could do neon pink centers for the cobalt, cobalt centers for the pink, and then this orange for the center of their lighter ones and vice versa. Um, but I'm just gonna do a yellow ochre with a touch of lemon yellow deep as my center. And I'm going to just kind of add little dots or sprinkles using the tip of my size six brush. If your petals are still wet, try to avoid painting these dots on top of them because that would be wet and wet painting and the yellow would just bloom right into the petal, which can be a fun look here and there, but if you don't want that to happen, you want your petals to be dry. And there you go for your little daisy cluster. All right, so next and finally for the third simple painting to try as a beginner, we're gonna do a sunset wash. So we already practiced wet and wet painting with our first one. What I'm gonna do is grab my size 16 brush and just a touch of opera rose on my brush, lots of water. I'm going to lay down water on my entire sheet or section that I'm painting on. So it's a really, really pale, watery base layer covering my entire sheet to make sure it stays really wet. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna add in color and paint a sunsetty sky, kind of like a sunset in California. We're gonna paint um, some palm trees once this dries. But next I'm going to grab a watery little bit of uh, opera rose. I'm gonna punch this in at the top and kind of make this almost like a, a U shape and add in darker color at the top so it fades and gets lighter. And then we'll move to orange. So cadmium orange looks good. And kind of overlap this pink, still making those curved strokes and making sure my base layer stays wet so these will have a nice blend. And then I'm gonna grab just water and I'm going to pull that orange down so that it fades, maybe a touch of yellow down here. And to blend that a little bit more, I'm just gonna grab water and bring it up. And while this is still wet, just kind of go back over some of these colors and I want some more pink. So watercolor always looks a lot darker and more saturated when it's wet. So keep that in mind when you're painting your sunset. If you want it to be super vibrant when it dries, you probably wanna go over these colors a couple of times. And I'm kind of going back over this transition between pink and orange so that we get this like pinky orange blend in the center before going to plain orange. And then at the very top, I'm just gonna do a touch of cobalt blue over this pink to show a violet transition into the sky and drag that down so it blends and isn't just a line across the top. Just kind of zigging and zagging towards the top of my paper for some little wispy cloud look. And then we're gonna wait for this to dry and paint in our palm tree. So some of this 
pigment was really extra wet and it's kind of pooling towards the edge of my sunset and I'm just kind of holding a dry paper towel to soak it up a little bit so that I don't get a like really hard line around that section of where the puddle is. So if you have any puddles on your, on your paper, just really delicately soak it up with a dry paper towel and then let it dry. Okay, so we painted wet and dry for our sunset. Now that this sunset is dry, we are gonna now paint using wet and wet technique, or wet and dry technique. We're gonna paint a cluster of palm trees kind of hanging over part of a cliff, or you're just seeing palm trees come into view and then maybe the ocean is over here or down here, you're on top of a cliff, who knows? Or you're driving down a road and there's some palm trees on the side. So we're gonna have them kind of hanging into frame. And the first one is gonna be closest to us. So it's gonna be the largest one. Um, so the trunk is gonna be a lot thicker than the other two we're gonna paint. And same with the leaves. For palm trees, I've got like a really thick consistency on my brush. So mostly paint and just a little bit of water so that my black is really opaque. This is also going to give me a dry texture when I paint. So I'm going to use about a 45 degree angle hold on my brush and I'm just going to kind of flick it. And as you can see, my brush is really dry. So it's going to give me that wispy texture. Let's widen the trunk a little bit. I'm gonna grab a little bit more water and just kind of press and flick. Press and flick. Maybe give it thin strokes, press, flick. And then we have another one coming here. It's thinner and smaller. And then here, really thin, barely touching my paper. And then just in the distance, really wispy and really small. Then I can go back on some of these palm leaves and add a little fluff. So again, my consistency is really dry. So I'm getting this rougher texture. For your trees, you wanna think about perspective. So picture maybe driving down Pacific Coast Highway and you're facing where the sun is setting and you have some silhouetted trees hanging over PCH. And so we've got kind of an arch here, but the road would be tapering off. So you can even add even smaller trees going down your side of your paper like this, if you wanted to. But it's really all about this texture in the paint. So you're just adding a wispy, flicky motion with your brush, but the consistency of water and pigment on your brush is really thick. There's not much water, maybe just a touch so that you can spread it a little bit. And if it's looking a little wet, just kind of get rid of some of that on your paper towel. And we're gonna add some on the right side too, maybe a little more cut off than on the left and just a touch higher so it's not so even.
wispy wispies. Maybe some crisscross. That's fun. Try and get similar to over there. Stroll in the streets of Beverly Hills or Laguna Beach or somewhere else. Such a cool looking painting, but it was so simple. We started with a wash, which by itself is beautiful as a background, um, of just blending color using wet and wet, waiting for it to dry and using simple dry strokes, like a straight line for the trunk and curving it down in kind of a flicking your wrist motion with a really dry consistency of dark black paint. So there you go, folks. Three simple paintings that anybody can do. Again, if you want the tape that I used, we'll link it in the description because it gives you that crispy edge, which is so nice. I obviously painted over it there. Um, and have fun with it. Stay loose. There you have it. We painted an abstract washy stripe, some clustery, fun, vibrant, contemporary daisy clusters and a landscape, a beautiful sunset. Like we're driving down some highway in California and it's beautiful. So I hope you had fun with that, stayed loose and kept it, kept it simple. If it didn't come out the way you wanted it to, don't worry, you have to continue to practice. Practice makes progress and you have to keep that in mind. So it's not gonna turn out how you want it to every single time, especially if you're brand spanking new to watercolor. So make sure you hop over to my channel. If you are new and you wanna explore a little bit more, I have a playlist dedicated for you um, all on watercolor basics. So make sure you check out that playlist and other beginner videos that we have on this channel, like the complete beginner's guide to watercolor because all of that is gonna just help you develop that muscle memory and that confidence with this amazing medium that I know that you will love, even sometimes when it frustrates you. So thanks again for watching this video and I'll see you in the next tutorial.